In this video, we're gonna go over Yasuo builds in Season 14. I've been a challenger on Yasuo for the past four seasons, and uh, I have gained a lot of experience, both on uh, mechanics and what to build, and the macro gameplay and everything you need to know to reach the higher ranks. So today I'm gonna teach you what items are available and uh, what items you should uh, avoid building. This is Yasuo's item set this season. All of these items will be relevant in certain games. Yasuo has a few core items that are relevant for most of his games. These are the most relevant items you should look out for. The Stridebreaker build is completely new this season. With a Berserker Rush, into Zeal, into Stridebreaker, and then you run Shield Bow. After this, it depends a lot on what the enemy team is playing. If they have almost full AD, run Death Stance or Iceborne Gauntlet. If they have a lot of mixed damage, run Jack Shaw. This build will make you very tanky but also put out a lot of damage. Plus, you have good mobility which can help you reach enemies and avoid getting caught. I like this build when my team is fairly squishy and we're lacking frontline. Also when the enemy team has a lot of burst damage and assassins, uh, that can kill me easily if I just run damage. The next build we're gonna take a look at is Berserker Greaves, Kraken Slayer, and Wit's End. This build is very relevant if you're playing against high CC mage team. So let's say you're playing against Lissandra and Elise, Syndra and Echo, Oriana and Malkai. Those type of champs that have high CC and also does magic damage. This build allows you to run tenacity in your runes because you have a lot of attack speed both in Kraken Slayer, Berserkers and Wit's End which means you don't need to build Alacrity. What is nice about Wit's End now, it gives tenacity which means you will have 40% tenacity into high CC mage comps. This will make you a lot less vulnerable to CC and will also make you fairly tanky into the mage champs. After these two items, I like a shield bow to get the life steal and also the burst protection. These three items work really well together. Now we're gonna talk about the highest damage build Yasuo has, which is Berserker Greaves, Kraken Slayer, Infinity Edge. This will give you a lot of DPS and burst damage, but will make you very squishy. I only recommend building this build if your team is very behind and you have to carry. Also if you have a lot of engage, frontline and people that can set you up in team fights, Like Malphite and Diana. Most of the time when I run this build I struggle to stay alive. And it doesn't matter if you have a lot of damage if you get one shot by literally every single champion. This is why I think this build is one of the least relevant builds in the new season. But can work into certain games. This build also has possibilities for tankier items later. Getting shield bow and death stance will definitely make you more tanky. The next item we're going to talk about is Blade of the Rune King. Blade of the Rune King or Bork will always be relevant into tanky teams. Let's say you're playing against Cho'Gath mid, they have a Orn top, maybe a Malkai jungle and a Nautilus support. If you're playing against tanky teams like this, Bork will be very valuable. I think this item can only be relevant in like 5-10% to of your total games. But make sure to look out for the comps where it can really put out a lot of damage. Now let's talk quickly about Zeal. Zeal doesn't build into any items relevant for Yasuo anymore. But the stats and the cost efficiency is definitely very valuable. This means that running Zeal on its own can be worth it in a lot of games. With crit, movement speed and attack speed, which are very relevant stats for Yasuo. There's also a new relevant item that has entered the rift, called Trial Blazer. This item is very gold efficient. It only costs 2400 gold, which is one of the most cheap items in the game, but also has very relevant stats for certain games. So look out for this item if you're playing against heavy AD and need some mobility. 
Now let's talk about Spirit Visage and Force of Nature. Spirit Visage is a very good item if you're running a lifesteal build and have shielding and healing supports. If you have Ivern on your team, Soraka on your team, Nami on your team, these types of champs. But let's say you don't have these champs on your team. Then overall, Force of Nature gives you more magic resist and will make you more tanky in the teamfights. Now let's talk about PD or Phantom Dancer. Phantom Dancer gives Yasuo all the stats he needs for a very efficient price on 2800 gold. This item will give you mobility, attack speed and AD. I like to run Phantom Dancer when I feel like I need more, more mobility and I want to run tenacity in my runes. I think Phantom Dancer is a great item if you want to give up some of your damage for more mobility and attack speed. Plus it's a very cheap item. The next item we're going to talk about is Jackshaw. This item used to be a mythic item, but now you can build it with anything. This item I think is one of the most powerful items in the game and might actually be borderline broken right now. This is why I like to build it pretty much every single game if I'm playing against mixed damage teams. Now let's talk about Shieldbow and Bloodthirster. When do I build what? Shieldbow I think is a great item overall and is way cheaper than Bloodthirster. That's why I run Shieldbow 80% of the time over Bloodthirster. Bloodthirster I think can be a very relevant item if you're playing against a bunch of bruisers and not high burst champs. Bloodthirster works really well if you're playing against high poke teams and need the extra lifesteal. While Shieldbow on the other hand is overall just a better item and more gold efficient. Now let's talk about Maw. This item I rarely build and I think is a bait item most of the time. It can be very good if you're playing against AP assassins like Evelyn. But overall Shieldbow will also help you in this regard. And you cannot build Shieldbow if you're running Maw. Which is also one of the reasons why I don't like this item. Though I think it can be relevant in very very specific scenarios. Storm Racer is one of the items I also rarely build. I see certain Yasumins build this item and I think it can be good in certain games. I'm not a huge fan personally of this item but I think this is also very subjective. So if you want to switch out Kraken Slayer, Phantom Dancer, Stride Breaker for Storm Racer in certain games, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Although I personally would never build this item. Let's talk about Terminus, also a new item this season. I also don't think this item is relevant for Yasuo and it's not in the item set at all. Personally I think building Yasuo Bruiser is way better than building him full damage this season. This is why this is not really a relevant item in my opinion. Lord Dominix or Mortal Reminder. Lord Dominix and Mortal Reminder are very late game items. If you're playing against Bruisers and Tanks, these items can be very useful. Mortal Reminder definitely better if you're playing against a champ like Aatrox and Silas, while uh, Lord Dominix can be a lot better into champs like Orn, Malphite or Cho'Gath. These items I rarely build and feel like I don't really need most of my games, but there are definitely scenarios where it's worth building them. Last but not least, let's talk about Yasuo's runes. The Eiffel Tempo is definitely the most relevant rune for Yasuo and you should build it in 95% of your games. This is the standard page against mages where second wind will help you withstand the poke and overgrowth gives you some good health scaling. If you're playing against melee champs like Silas, Pantheon or Renekton, then taking bone plating instead will be worth it. Now let's talk about fleet footwork. Fleet is very good into certain champs like LeBlanc because your lethal tempo will be very hard to proc into that champion. This means that the mobility and the healing in lane will be better than ha having the attack speed rune. You always have to think about how you will utilize your rune into certain matchups. And if you don't think you will be able to proc your lethal tempo or someone's gonna kite you perma, then fleet footwork will usually be better in those types of games. Last but not least, let's talk about Grasp. Grasp is a very good and hard scaling rune and works well with overgrowth and the new tank items. If you're playing against champs like Kassadin, taking Grasp will be worth it in the long run. 
you can try and match his scaling and you will be a very big late game monster. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. Make sure to leave a like if you did and also leave a comment if you're wondering about something with the builds or if I didn't mention something that you think is relevant. I'll try and answer as best as I can. Also, if you enjoy the gameplay I provide, make sure to check out my Twitch. Link will be down in the description.